with the priority to do better with reconciliation and equality. We then have two representatives from the Office of Public Prosecutions, Jason Ong, Managing Principal Solicitor, and Amanda Bai, uh, Advocacy and Breaking Manager. Jason and Amina, along with multiple members of the OPP, have provided unwavering support for the witness examination competition. Having them here today shows their strong commitment to the growth and develop, sorry, development of the future generation of their solicitors and barristers. Through their knowledge and experience, they are able to provide sound advice for the new wave of legal practitioners. I now invite you to enjoy the 2019 Grand Final of Witness Examination. Yes, thank you. Could we take appearances, please? If it pleases the court, Your Honours, my name is Megan Roller and I'm here on behalf of the prosecution. Thank you, Ms. Roller. May it please the court, Your Honours, my name is Harry Sanson, counsel for the defendant, Mr. Roller. Thank you, Mr. Sanson. Ms. Roller, could you do the opening address, please? On the evening of the 24th of December, 2018, brothers John, James and Jared Doe broke into their neighbour's family home, intending to steal several items. Now the brothers deliberately robbed the home when they believed the house was vacant. You will hear evidence that the brothers believed they had seen the entire Bloggs family, the residents of that home, leave in their car to go to Cam Carol's by candlelight. Supporting this belief, there appeared to be no lights on in the house and it was quiet. For this reason, they did not carry weapons when they entered the Bloggs residence. They did not, they believed, need to arm themselves. Unfortunately, 43-year-old Mary Bloggs, the accused in this case, and her daughter were home. After a confrontation, the accused shot James and Jerry Doe, thereby killing them. The boys were only 15 years old. The accused is now charged with the murder of both children. And to prove this charge, prosecution must prove beyond reasonable doubt four elements. The accused committed the acts which caused their death. The accused committed those acts involuntarily. And notably here, it is assumed under the law that all acts are involuntary. The accused committed those acts whilst intending to kill the victim or cause them serious harm. And the accused did not have legal justification for this, including the justification of self-defense. Now, defense counsel have already indicated they will raise the self-defense in this trial today. A prosecution must therefore prove beyond reasonable doubt the accused at the time of shooting the boy did not genuinely believe that this was necessary to defend herself and her response was objectively unreasonable in the the circumstances. Would you, like to, would you like to call your first witness, please? I would, Your Honour. If I could call Mr. John Doe. Mr. John Doe, come forward, please. Certificate of indemnity is a matter for him. He should apply uh, for the 
it doesn't affect the court. I don't think you know, the witnesses should be, you should proceed with your examination. Yeah. I'll take you to the morning of the 24th of December 2019. Can you describe to me what happened on that day? Um, what time he got up in the morning and uh, what he did shortly after he got up or you asked him a witness to can you relate some specific event. Can you describe to me who you met that day? Uh, my brothers. brothers. What's your brother's names? Uh, Jared and James Doug. And in the context of this proceeding, who are they? My young twin brothers. I'll be first. In the context of this proceeding, are there anyone of significance? Uh, yeah, well, we, um, we made a plan together to rob Mary's house that night. How old were your brothers? 15. Did you meet your brothers that day? Can you give us a specific time? Uh, as best as we can remember. Well, we got up probably nine ish. You, you said you already in evidence that you decided you would rob your neighbor's house that day. Can you elaborate, please? Yep. Yeah, uh, we know that they go to the carols by candlelight that evening every year. So I thought that they'd wouldn't be home, it'd be a good time to get the job done. And you said already that these people were your neighbours? Yes. In the context of this proceeding, who are your neighbours? Uh, Mary and her family. Mary Bloggs and her family. And who is Mary Bloggs in this proceeding? Oh, our neighbour. And in this proceeding, is Mary Bloggs any person of significance? Yeah, well, she shot my brother. Thank you. You've already alluded to the fact that Mary Bloggs has a family yeah. who live in the neighbouring house. Can you tell us more about her family? Uh, she lives with her husband mm -hmm. and two daughters. How old are her daughters? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you describe? As best as you can, a, a rough age? Uh, probably 15, 16, something like that. I have objection, Your Honor. The yes. evidence. Um, I don't think a witness is qualified to speculate the exact age of the two daughters. So it's been asked to speculate about the age of the daughters who live across the road? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Why, why does it matter anyway? I'm not sure if you're the point issue, Your Honour, but um, I'd just be aware of admitting that specific age into evidence. Well, it seems to me any, my, any civilian witness who knows uh, uh, people who are witnesses in a case knows them well is in a position to give evidence as to their approximate age. Whether it's precise or not, it uh, may not be a matter of any importance. Yes, Your Now you've already given evidence that you believed that Mary and her family would be going to Carol's by Candlelight, Carol's by Candlelight that night. Can you tell us some more about what you understand about Carol's by Candlelight? Yeah, well, it start. They leave about seven o'clock and they're away the whole evening. Something it happens in the city. It's a TV show and it goes for hours and hours. So you've told us you've met your two brothers in the morning, yeah. sometime after nine o'clock, because that's when you woke up. Can you now elaborate what else you did that day, if anything? Uh, we hung around, we had some beers, mucked around. Uh, Can you recall what beers? Just some light beers. Yeah. 
and then what happened that day? So we were, as I say, we went around drinking beers and then about 7 o'clock, roundabouts, I, um, I heard their car leaving. I went to Sorry, the, who's car leaving? The neighbour's car. He didn't need to be there. I was here but multiple neighbours. Yeah, Mary Bloggs and her family's car. I saw them leaving around about the time we expected it to go. And um, we kind of gathered ourselves and we got ready to jump the fence and rob the house. Okay, well, I'll take you back a few more steps yeah. so you can clarify what you did between 9am and the time that you did attempt to rob Mary's house, sure. or the accused's house. You at some point then stopped drinking. Yeah, I'm checking you on a leading question. I believe that in first answer. Well, the witness has already said at some point he stopped drinking. He's just been asked like, to identify the point of the narrative that he's been questioned about. It's quite appropriate to be able to say, you said earlier, at some point he stopped drinking. What point was that? Uh, how long after that did something happen, etc. It's merely, merely a technique for getting to the point. At what point did you stop drinking? Right about 7 o'clock. At what point to your knowledge did the other two brothers stop drinking? Well, I've just seen like seven at the time. And how much beer have you, have you, as a collective, consumed between the times of the drinking and 7 o'clock? Yeah, we polished up the whole side. How many beers were you slapped with beer? This night? 24 beers. And when exactly it was the best you knowledge to start drinking? Breakfast on time. Breakfast pizza. Can you give us an hour? <coughs> Half past nine, maybe. Not long after we got up. Aside from drinking beers, did you do anything else that day? No. Oh, well, what do you mean? We fucked around. And it was a hot day, so we were playing with water bombs and that sort of thing. Just hanging out. You said water bombs? Yes. Water bombs. You know, you fill a balloon up with water and you chuck it at each other. That's all. What was the point of filling balloons with water? Bit of fun. It's a hot day. And did you use anything else for the same purpose? Yeah, the brothers have um, little water pistols. Little toy water pistols. Your brothers? You said two brothers? Yeah, they had one each. Run around shooting each other. Can you describe these water pistols? Yep, they're about that big. Um, Can you describe that's about uh, 10 centimetres. 100 mils each. Big 10 centimetres, yes. <laughs> and what kind of uh, Bright green and bright, maybe bright orange with the other one. Did you consume? On that day, any other substance which might alter your perception aside from the light years? So you've already told us you did the last drink at 7 pm, and at some point you decided to rob your neighbor's house and you jumped the fence. Can you elaborate, please? Elaborate on what aspect? On how you jumped the fence, sorry, how you jumped. Why is that relevant? Simply get me here. You can see bits and jump the fence. Why do you need to establish that again? I can ask you a question, Your Honour, if you think it's relevant. Right. What were you wearing, if anything, when you jumped the fence? The crown hoodies. Why did you wear the hoodies? Sorry? Why did you wear the hoodies? Um, we're going to jump the fence. I guess we didn't want to attract too much attention. Were you all wearing boots? Yeah. So you made a decision to rob the house about 7 pm. Why did you choose to rob the house at that time? Because the neighbours had gone out. And what gave you the impression the neighbours had gone out? Well, we saw them leaving the car and the house.
house was dead, that there was no lights on, didn't appear to be any movement in the house. But How certain was this car? That was their car? Yeah. Very certain. Why is it? Well, it's parked next to our house every day, I don't know what it looks like. And to your knowledge, who was driving the car? Or who was in the car? Well, I thought I saw four people in the car. That'd be the whole thing. Now, um, yeah, as I said, we put on hoodies and um, we each grabbed a backpack and um, then we went out our door and jumped the fence into the yard. Uh... Were you carrying anything? No, just the backpacks on our backs. And to your knowledge, were the brothers carrying anything? No. And describe to me, please. If you made any observations and what they were when you approached the house? Well, I said it was dark, there didn't seem to be anybody around. Um, and how did you enter the house at all? Uh, James uh, picked up a rock, smashed the laundry window, and he was going to climb through and then open up the door so that we could get in. And then what happened? So he did that, he smashed the window and he went to climb through but I think he cut his hand on the, on the glass. He started swearing about that. And, um, but then he did go in and he opened up the door and we came in after him. Can you describe the lightings of the house? Yeah, it was very... Uh, the curtains were, were drawn so it was low light in there. But it was still enough light to be able to see them. So at this point you're all in the house? Yep. And what happened there? Um, so James had cut his hand getting in the window, right? So he started looking through the cupboards for a first aid kit or a band aid or something. And while he was doing that, I had the backpack and um, Jared had our backpacks and we were starting to grab stuff um, that we could find, like a, some money and an iPad, things like that. And um, then uh, Jared said that he saw a, a, play, a PlayStation at the TV and he sat down to start unplugging that. And while that was happening, uh, James was for whatever reason, he was eating a banana that he found off the kitchen bench. You're certain it's the banana? Sorry, sir. So You're certain it's the banana? Oh, yeah. And how did you next? Well, I saw him eating a banana. You know, I heard him eating a banana as a noisy eater. Did you think anything of this? No. I just, I don't know, saw it and wanted to eat it. And then what happened? Uh, then all of a sudden, I heard two or three bangs, loud bangs, and I was so scared. I, I saw that James was uh, on, the, on the ground there, bleeding, and um, I realized he was shot. He wasn't moving. And then what? Uh, so I turned and I saw a figure standing at the bottom of the stairs, the second story of the house, and I recognized her, it was Mary, Mary Glock, she was there. Did she do anything? She was holding a gun in her hand. And did she say anything? Well, I put my hands up and said, don't shoot! And I heard her yell to back to me, get out of my house or I'll send you to hell. And then what happened? And then Jared was sitting on the floor, he stood up and he raised his arm uh, at Mary. And I saw that he had his small bright green water pistol in his hand. And then I heard another bang and I realised Mary had shot him too and he fell to the ground with a big thud. And then she ran up the stairs and I don't know what to do. And I was scared and I was shocked and I don't know. Thank you. Your time's expired. Yes, thank you. I'll call on Mr. Sanderson to cross again and join the Thank you, Honour.
Mr. Doe, I'd just like to ask you a few questions on the evidence you've just given before we go to bed. I recognise this probably traumatic for you, so if you would like me to slow down or rephrase anything, please just let me know. So we'll start just with a bit of context about you. So you are unemployed, that's correct? That's correct. And you say you dropped out of school, is that right? Objection. What's the basis of the objection? The relevance of leaving school at a certain age, Your Honour. Yes, what is the relevance, Mr. Sanderson? Uh, well, I believe it was evidence that we just gave that was confirmed, Your Honour, but I think it goes towards the circumstances of this robbery. Uh, how does it do so? Uh, I'm trying to tease out the witness's motive for uh, robbing this house. So, what's, what's the question again as to motive? Uh, the question is in a line of question determining um, essentially the circumstances of um, John Doe at the time of these events. All right, I'll allow you to proceed. So. Thank you, um, Mr. Doe, it's fair to say then, given that you were unemployed, uh, that money was tied? Um, Sandling's pretty good. Uh, but it's fair to say you won't flush with cash, being unemployed and not studying. Flush with cash? I mean, did you have a lot of money, essentially? At the same time that you decided to rob this house for one, isn't that right? I had stuff as well, yeah. Right, I mean, stuff to sell? Um, or stuff you couldn't afford? See, we didn't really know what she had, put that way. Right, you said you hoped to find cash, iPads, mobile phones and jewellery, that's right? Yeah. Presumably the jewellery wasn't for you three, it was to sell. Right, so you three decided, since you didn't have much money, to rob this house. Is that fair to say? Not just for that reason. Is it fair to say that you, you've done this before, or you robbed a house before? Um, I don't know if I want to answer that question in court. Okay. I mean, when you're robbing a house, it seems to me that it's fairly organised. You have bags and hoodies, that's right, isn't it? So, have you done this before with your brothers? It's the same thing again. I don't know what you're going to say that. No. And you were wearing balaclavas at the time, weren't you? No. You weren't wearing balaclavas? No. Were you wearing the hoodies to obscure your face? No. Right. But they did have hoods pulled up, didn't they? Well, a hood doesn't obscure your face, though. Right. Well, presumably you wouldn't want anyone to see your face when you break into a house. There was nobody in the house at the time. Well, there was, Mr. Doe, clearly. Well, we didn't know that when we were getting ready to go. Right, but you still all, you say, put on these black hoodies. Is that right? They weren't black hoodies. They just put on hoodies. Right, so you all put on hoodies and you say you grabbed your back, backpacks as well so you could carry the stolen things. Yep. Right. Let's talk a bit about the events before you broke the house. You say you were drinking all day, is that right? Right, so you finish your slab by the end of the day. And it's your evidence that you weren't smoking marijuana. Is that right? Yeah. But you say you do so often. Yeah. So you've done so the day before? No. Uh, I guess there's a chance I did, yeah. Right. Do you not remember? Uh, no, I don't remember. Right. So you're drinking all day with your brothers. That's right. Yeah. You say that someone in the house is smoking but you don't remember who. No, so, right. despite you being a frequent smoker of marijuana, your evidence is that you weren't smoking that day. That's correct, I wasn't smoking that day. Right. Do you know which brother was smoking? Objection, Your Honour. Yes, I, I submit it's not relevant that the brothers were smoking marijuana. Yes, how, how is the question of alcohol consumption and marijuana consumption relevant to the charge of murder? Uh, Your Honor, I think it goes to the evidence that Mr. Doe has given about his perception of what happened in the house. I think if he was uh, under the influence of alcohol and marijuana, it directly affects the evidence that he gave the chief. So you're saying that there are some aspects of his evidence that you want to challenge on the basis that uh, they're unreliable because of alcohol or drugs? Yes, Your Honor. All right, all out.
Mr. Doe, you recount going over to the house and breaking the window. My brother broke the window again. You did that with a rock, didn't you? Did he break the with a rock or did you? He broke the window. No, I broke the window, sorry. So you break the window and he jumps in. Yeah. Had you three talked about the robbery before and talked about the fact that it was illegal? Objection, Your Honour. That was two questions in one. It was. Which one were you objecting to? More that it was confusing to have two questions in one, Your Honour. I'm sorry. I can, can rephrase the question, Your Honour. Were you and your brothers aware that breaking the house was illegal? Isn't everybody aware of that? Yeah. So once you get into this house, you break the window, and then you say it's dark inside. Yeah. Right, so the lights are off. Yeah. And presumably you are dressed in dark clothing. Uh, no, I think we were there wearing dark clothing. Right, but <laughs> obviously you didn't want to be seen breaking into this house. Is that fair to say? Well, again, there was nobody home, so no one's going to be seeing us breaking into the house. Well, there was someone home today. Yeah, again, we didn't know there was someone home when we got ready. Did you not care then about being seen and leaving the house or breaking into the house? After this all happened, mm. if we not care. Uh, sorry, beforehand, when you were going to the house, surely you were conscious of being seen walking into the back of someone's house. Well, we just jumped over the fence from our house to the next to the neighbours. Right. Just watching there. So when you're in the house, let's just talk a bit about what you do. And you say. You and your brother, Jared, saw some iPads and money on the counter, and you start filling it into a bag, that's right? Yeah. Well, we both just grabbed what we could. Right, then you said Jared goes over to a PlayStation. Yeah. And it's at that point in your evidence that you hear <coughs> two or three bangs. Yeah. And you say two or three, do you remember if it was two or three? Two or three, that's one. Right. So you're filling this bag with things, and then you hear these bangs, and then you look up, and you see your brother on the ground. Yeah. So you didn't see Mary fire the gun at that point? Well, no, I saw him on the ground. And then he turned, and that's when you see Mary? Yeah, that's when, right. And then your evidence is that you turn around, and you see Jared stand up from where he is down at the PlayStation, is that right? No, in between, I, when I saw Mary Blogs, I put my hands up and I said, don't shoot. And I heard her yell back, get out of my house, or I'll send you to hell. Right, so she says, get out of my house. Or I'll send you to hell. That's what she Did you go to get out of her house? It all happened so quickly, because after that, Jared stood up, right, and then he got shot. So Jared bursts up, that's right. Did he move to get out of the house? Uh, Maybe he was moving to get out of the house. I had my hands up, my other brother was dead. It was a pretty hectic situation. Right, that wasn't your evidence, Mr. Blocks. You didn't say he moved to get out of the house. You said what he did was raise his arm. Isn't that right? Well, hang on, you just asked me if we started moving to get out of the house at that stage. I'm like, I told you, everything was so hectic. One brother's dead, my other brother's just stood up and I've got my hands up in the air. Well, my question was, did Jared go to leave the house? He put his hand. He put his hand up, and he had the little gun in his hand. So he pointed the gun at her. I don't know if he pointed the gun at her or not, but he had the gun in his hand when I saw his hand go up. That's why I said I don't know if he was going to leave then or not. But he stood up and he had the gun in his hand, and then bang, and then he's dead. I would put it to you that if she said get out. I mean, clearly he did it. He stood up and pointed the gun at her, didn't he? No, I don't think that's what happened. Well, I mean that is your evidence. No, I said he stood up and he had the gun in his hand and then he was shot. I mean, you didn't say he had the gun in his hand, you said he raised his hand at her. Isn't that right? No, I saw that he had the small uh, green water pistol in his hand and then bang. Your evidence in chief was he raised his arm at Mary Bloggs. Your Honour, I 
project might be used for clarify which land is being raised? Well, I don't think that arises out of that question. It's, it's a matter you could redirect on. Yes, proceed. Thank you, Ron. I think that's been put to you, Mr. Doe, so I'll move on. When he is standing there, then Mary shoots him. That's your evidence. And you are looking at him when that happens. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I saw him fall to the ground. So again, you sort of hear a loud bang from Mary's direction and he falls. Nods don't count. We have to speak. So that can be on the transcript. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Doe. Just going back a few minutes before the first gunshot, you you said your evidence was that you didn't know anyone's home. That's right. Okay. So when Mary comes down, presumably you are surprised. Yes. And she must have been surprised as well because seeing you there. Yes. Objection. This witness can't attest to Mary's or the accused state of mind. It's all what she saw. Yes, I agree with that. I'll retract that question, Your Honour. But you maintain you were surprised when she came down. Yeah. You said in your evidence that you decided to rob your neighbour, that's right? So Mary is your neighbour. Yes. Did you dislike her before all these events? Oh, didn't think much of it. But you're aware that she had two children, you said? Yes. Are you aware of what she did for a living? Uh, no. Okay. So, even knowing she had two children, you decided to rob her? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And that's, again, because your need of the money outweighed their right to the possession. <coughs> Is that fair to say? Just can I just clarify, the certainly the 15 is being used. There's 15 minutes left. Right. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. <coughs> I'll repeat that. So, you knew her, you knew had, she had children, but you nonetheless had decided to break in. Is that right? Yes. The evidence is now, I would put it to you, that your relationship is sour. When you say you hope she goes to jail for the rest of her life, she killed my brothers. Right. So that's so, what so it's fair to say that you dislike Mary. After killing my brothers, yeah. Would you say you hate her? Hate? Would you say you hate her? For killing my brothers? Yes. It's hard not to. Right. You get evidence you hope she goes to jail. She killed my brothers. Right. You also say that you hope she goes to jail because she killed your brothers in a violent manner. Yeah. But I would put it to you, Mr. Doe, that you broke in and started her. Surely this wasn't an act of out and out violence. A violence by breaking into her house. Your evidence was, you said, she shot dead my brothers in a violent manner. Yes. Surely it's not a violent act if you were the ones breaking into her home. Is it matter matter for the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Thought I'd put it to the witness. I'll move on. You also said that you feel responsible for the death of your brothers. Is that right? In part, yes. You are a few years older than them. That's right, isn't it? Yes. They are 15, I believe. Yes. So you, is it fair to say, have sort of led them into this robbery? I guess that's fair to say, because I am the older brother. And were you aware that there was some sort of risk going in? I thought because there was no one home, there was no risk. You thought there was no risk in robbing a home? That's why we went and did it. But now, you feel responsible? In part, yes. You say towards the end of your statement that everything happened quite fast. Is that a fair characterization of the events in the house? Yes. So it was somewhat of a blur, the two shots. I said it happened very fast, yeah. Right. 
In fact, in a whole day, there are a few instances where you don't remember what happened. Is that right? No. I mean, with the marijuana, you don't remember which brother was smoking marijuana, is that correct? Well, I didn't know which brother was smoking marijuana. It's not like I knew and I forgot. I didn't know. Someone was doing that. You say you're not sure that there were four people in the car. Is that right? I thought that there were four people in the car. Well, you said you were about 80% sure. That's right. Objection. My letter friend is reading the transcript. She hasn't yet to it into evidence. Transcript uh, will very often be referred to without it being available to the parties at that stage. There's nothing wrong with referring to transcript. So just to clarify, you weren't absolutely sure of the four people in the car? Yeah, I was nearly certain, but... What, well, 80% is it a clean number for our purposes? If you weren't entirely sure that the house was empty, why did you need the robbery? I was sure enough to make that decision. But you did understand that you were putting your two brothers at risk. Maybe at risk of getting busted by the neighbour, but not shot and killed. That never even entered my mind that she had a gun or that she would kill my brothers, 15 year old boys. So you didn't foresee them coming into any harm? Not getting shot and killed, no. Despite having doubts about someone that could potentially defend the home if they were there? Well, you might get a slap on the wrist if you, if you, you know, you're caught in your neighbour's house, potentially, but not shot and killed. When you discussed the robbery before you went in, describe grabbing the hoodies and the backpacks. Were you aware that one of your brothers had bought the gun? No. So you hadn't discussed him bringing the gun? No. So, and this is Jared, I believe, who had the gun? Yes. So is it fair to say then that you were surprised when he pulled out this gun? Yes. Uh, I'm referring to the water gun, I believe, that uh, Mr. Dogo Evans was pulled out by Gary. Well, um, I think in fairness to the witness, you should um, make it clear that that's what you're referring to. It is, in fact, the water gun, pistol rather than the gun. Apologies, Your Honour. That is the water gun, this green water gun that you said they were playing with at the start of the day. Yeah. Um, were you aware that... Sorry, I'll rephrase. You said before that this is 10 centimetres long? Yeah. So it's shaped essentially like a normal gun, is that right? I mean a normal pistol, generally. But just smaller. Oh, 10 centimetres, I mean that's... No, that's that. <laughs> um, so that, would you say? 100 millimetres. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's the shape of a pistol, that's right. Yeah. Were you aware that John was holding a knife, uh, apologies, James was holding a knife while you were uh, putting iPads in your bag? He was not holding a knife, he was eating a banana at that time. Did you say you saw him eat a banana, but in fact you were putting iPads in your bag, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, you could do two things at the same time. Well, hang on, you say you were putting iPads in your bag and then you hear the shots and that's when you turn around to see him lying on the ground. Yeah, I've seen him eating a banana and I'm grabbing stuff and then I hear the shot. Right. So in that time it's entirely possible he was holding a knife. I guess so. But I didn't see that. I saw him eating a banana. When the police came, you say you can't quite remember what you said because again it was a bit of a blur. That's right? It was a long night, yes. You also said you thought they might have kicked you but you weren't sure either. Is that right? I felt pretty sore. 
the following day. I felt like I'd been kicked a bit there. So it's fair to say that your recollection of the day was hazy. Well, at, at that time of the night, after being sat down for a while with no water and everything, I felt like I'd been... I know like the police pushed me down and they twisted my arm behind my back. I felt like I was going to break my arm. Right. You said you weren't sure what they could do at the time. Well, I'm pretty sure they did. Thank you. 
this box. State your full name and age for the court. My full name is Mary Bloggs and I'm 43 years old. I'd just like you to talk about the morning of the 24th of December 2018. Can you talk about what you did as soon as you got up? Well, it was like every other Christmas Eve for me. I woke up very early in the morning and made breakfast for my husband Joe and my two daughters, Millie and Molly. Okay. What did you do uh, after that? Later that morning, I... Objection, Your Honour. I found the relevance of this, the accused's every movement of that day to the offence of murder or the issue of self-defence. I think it might be said there was a bit of that on both sides, but uh, if you could get to the point, please, Mr. Sanderson. Yes, Your Honour. Uh, I do believe some of this is important for the context of where she went and how she arrived at home that night. Um, I take the point, Your Honour. This blog, just to ask you to very quickly describe the events of mid-afternoon. I left the Salvation Army where I'm a volunteer coordinator and I'm in charge of the Angel Tree Program where I provide Christmas gifts to less privileged children. And after that, I went to visit the local news nursing home with other members of the church. Your Honour. Yes. How is this relevant, Mr. Sanderson? Uh, I think it gives context to when it's today, but I'm happy to, to skip to the events of It's purely self serving character evidence. It's no other evidence. Thank you, Your Honour. Um, Ms. Bogues, perhaps we, if we can get to uh, when you were at home that day. I got home late afternoon. Um, we normally go to the carols by candlelight, but this year we had a big Christmas Day plan, so we decided to have a quiet night in and watch it on TV. Okay, so when you say we, who was at home? I was home with my husband Joe and my two daughters, Millie and Joe. And did all of you remain at home that night? Joe's parents were flying in from England later that night, so he left her at the airport at about 7 o'clock with Millie, and Molly was at home with me. Can you just describe um, what you and your daughter did at the moment after your husband left? We, after Joe and Millie left, we stayed home and watched TV and ate some popcorn. Can you describe the events a bit later in the night? At about 7.30 p.m., I think I heard some noises coming from downstairs. I believe they're all male and maybe one female voice, and I was quite scared. Okay, so you're upstairs watching television and you've heard these voices downstairs. Yes. So how did you react to that? I was very scared, so I you know, went downstairs to the safe and received, retrieved a small handgun. Can you just describe that gun? It's a quite antique gun, and my husband Joe keeps it as a souvenir. I've never seen him use it before, and I don't even know if it was capable of firing. Okay. So you have this gun. What do you do next? I walked downstairs to the ground level where I got the absolute shock of my life when I saw four intruders in my house. Can you describe the intruders as best you can? They were all wearing balaclavas and they were spaced out around the downstairs floor. Did they make any movements? I saw one intruder at my kitchen bench. Um, I saw he had a large knife in his hand and at this stage I was quite startled. Did you make any movements towards him? Well, as he turned towards me and raised the knife above his head, I, he was about 10 metres away from me and as my startled reflex I fired the gun once in his general direction. And did that gun go off? Yes, it fired. And what happened to him? I, I shot it in his general direction and I think it hit him because the intruder fell to the ground immediately. So that's one intruder and um, what are the other ones doing? There was another intruder, he put his hands up and yelled, shit, where I screamed at him, I said, get out of my house or I'll shoot you as well. Okay, so that's the second one. Uh, the other intruders doing anything? All of a sudden, a third intruder stood up. He was standing next to the TV and he produced a handgun and pointed it directly at my head. How did you react to that? 
I was in absolute fear. I had no choice. I fired the gun in his direction. Okay. What happened to you? He also fell to the ground. Okay. And what did you do after that? I then ran back up the stairs because I assumed there may be other intruders and I wasn't sure what they would do. So just to go back over that, you've come down, there's the one that you fired at, and you said the second put his hands up, yes. and then the third stood up and you fired him as well, that's correct? Yes. And then immediately you run back the stairs. So can you just describe your mindset at that point? Well, I was absolutely startled. I mean, there's intruders in my house and my daughter's home, so in my, you know, my only reaction would be to try and protect myself and my daughter. Thank you, Ms. Blogs. No further questions, Ron. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to have the cross examination of Mary Boggs. You normally go to Kennels by Candlelight on the eve of Christmas, don't you? Yes. That's a habit, isn't it? Yes, every year. You've already said that it's cheap, that at 7.30pm, you and Molly are upstairs watching TV. And you thought you heard four or five different voices? Yes. You thought they were male and female? Yes, I think they were all male, male and maybe one female voice. A male voice is generally low pitch, isn't it? Yes, most of the time. And a woman's voice is generally high pitch, isn't it? But you now know there are not any other females in that house besides you and Molly, correct? Yes. So it's fair to say that you were incorrect in believing at that time that there was a female in the house aside from you and Molly. Initially, yes, because I was watching TV, I was focused on that, not really focused on what else was happening around the house at the time. You said that you were focused on the TV? Yes, we were watching TV together. But before the voices, did you not turn the volume of the TV down to low? Well, that was after I heard the, that was after we heard the voices, yes. We turned it down to low to see if you could hear anything else that was going on. I'll take you paragraph seven of this segment. Please. Can you read line three to the end of the, the, I turn the volume of the TV down low and finish that sentence, please. And Molly and I sat in silence. And can you go on? After a while I heard voices that seemed to be coming from downstairs. Can I just clarify where you're at on the statement? Paragraph 71. Oh, yes, thank you. So you've just given evidence a minute ago saying you're concentrating on the TV. Yes. And then you heard voices, yes. which were mostly male, maybe a female. And you said you try to justify a confusion as to there being a female voice because there was the TV on, correct? Yes. And you were listening to the TV presumably whilst also hearing his voices in the house. Yes. But that isn't correct, is it? Well, at the time, you know, we were watching TV and like I can't recall exactly, you know, the exact situation because 
you know, I was with my daughter, we were watching TV together, and like, I can't recall every second of what happened. So, so I do, I do know. Per your statement, is that correct? Sorry, can you repeat what you said before? Looking at your statement, it would be incorrect, temporarily, to suggest that the TV was on with the volume loud to the point that you can hear people on the TV whilst you are also hearing voices downstairs. That is incorrect. Well, I don't remember the, if it was loud or moderate volume. But is it incorrect for your statement? Sorry, can you, can you repeat that again? You've given evidence. I'll, I'll try and understand you. You've given evidence that you heard voices downstairs. Correct. Yes. Someone male. Correct. Yes. One or more voices were female, I believe. Yes, I believe. And you said that you were confused as a female voice because the TV was on. Correct. Yes. And assumedly the TV was emitting sounds. Correct. Yes. Including voices. Correct. Well, yes, it's carried by candlelight. It's a that people speak in sentences. And I object to this line of questioning. I'm not sure it's a point of contention that there were boys in the house. That there were what, sorry? That there were, that the, the three go boys were in the house. I'm not sure that's a point of contention here. Yes. Is it in dispute? And if it's in dispute, what are you seeking to it's dispute it with by this witness? Well, it just goes to the perception of the events, Your Honour. She's made blatant inconsistent statements from, us, from her statement to uh, what she said in, in cross-examination. So, what, can you just clarify for me, what is the point of difference between those two? What she said to you and what she said in the statement? What's the proposition you're putting in this? So it shows a change in her evidence. Yeah, in the statement it says she's turned the volume low and her and Molly sit in silence and then she hears males and females. Now, in my submission it's very different Male voices are very different to female voices. We know now there were no female intruders, only male intruders. What is the issue in the case of murder that you're seeking to establish? Well, I'm seeking just to throw doubt on this, this witness's, the accused's perception of the events. Yes, but what, what is it about what occurred or her version of what occurred that you say uh, uh, is uh, wrong? Your case is uh, different. So can you read the it's, one, it's one thing to say, I've just generally shown that uh, she's a witness who's vague and confused, uh, but is there any aspect of the evidence, like whether a gun was being held or a knife was being held or whatever, that you're saying is, has been introduced by her because of that confusion? And it's not otherwise right. It could go on to her, well, her reaction and who she believes is or is not in the house, including well, well, I won't take up all your time. We've only got a short time left, so we can proceed. I'll move on. Now, you said in evidence in chief that you saw four entries in your house, correct? Yes. But there weren't four entries in your house, were there? Initially, I thought there was four intruders, but perhaps I saw one two, two, two times, so I just assumed there was four. So, it's a yes or no question. There weren't four intruders in your house. There were three, no, so there were three. But you said there were, you saw four intruders, correct? Initially, I saw four. So, that is the second time that you had incorrectly perceived the events, correct? Initially, I believed I saw four intruders in the house. But after, then I knew that there was only three entries in the house. Well, how do you now know that there are only three? Well, as I stated in my previous examination, I saw, I stated the events of what happened with each intruder, but initially, I saw four intruders in my house. As, as I stated in my statement, I got the shock of my, shock of my life when I saw four intruders in my house. 
when did you realize we've done it correct? Is that something that you now know or you knew on the night? I know I knew I knew on the night because when I stated in my later statements when I saw like the three intruders, but I thought there was four initially. So you found out in the night that there were three intruders in your house? Yes. Yet you put in your statement you saw four intruders? Yes, initially I believed I saw four intruders. You didn't put in your statement, I believed I saw four intruders in my house, did you? It states, I got the shock of my life when I saw four intruders in my house. So I'll reset the question. You didn't in your statement say, I believed I saw four intruders in my house. Saw four intruders in the house. No, it says I saw. I saw four. I saw four intruders in my house. Is that yes or no? Yes, I saw four intruders in my house. I put to you they were not all wearing leather clothes. Yes, they were wearing leather clothes. Before going downstairs, you retrieved a small shotgun, correct? Yes. It's an antique gun, correct? Yes. You've never seen your husband use it before? I've never seen him use it before. And you didn't use it before? No. But you have? <coughs> oh, prior to this, I had not used it. You did not know it was capable of firing? Yes. You didn't believe it was capable of firing? I didn't even know because it was an antique gun and he, my husband kept it as a souvenir. I was, didn't believe it was capable of fire. I didn't believe. So you went downstairs and you saw, saw four intruders, correct? Yes. You saw one man who was looking through a first aid kit, correct? You believe you saw him holding a large knife in his hands? I saw he had a large knife in his hands. But he was at the same time going through the first aid kit? Yes. How can he go through a first aid kit, assumably using his hands, whilst also holding a knife with both his hands? He could have been holding the knife with one hand and going through the first aid kit with the other. You've previously said, a minute ago I said, I, that you said, I saw he had a large knife in his hands, plural hands, correct? Yes. So he's holding the knife with both hands, correct? I do not recall if it was both hands or one hand, but I just said he was holding a large knife. Well, you do recall because you just get evidence that he was holding the knife with both hands, two hands. So which is it? Is he holding a knife with, knife with two hands? Or is he going for the first aid kit? Or is he not holding a knife at all? He's holding a large knife in his hands. Both hands? Yes. Which is what he said in your statement? Yes. And you've already told us at the same time of holding that large knife, he was going for the first aid kit. He looked, it looked like he had stolen my first aid kit. But you told the court previously that he was going for the first aid kit yes. whilst holding a knife. I also saw he had a large knife in his hands. So I put to you, he could not hold the knife with two hands whilst also simultaneously going through the first aid kit. Do you confirm the knife? He was holding the knife in his hands. So I'll, I'll put to you the same thing, and you could say yes or no. I put to you, he was not holding the knife with two hands whilst also going through the first aid kit simultaneously. He was yes. not holding it, or he was holding it? He was not holding a knife whilst going through the first aid kit. He was holding a knife. I saw him holding a knife. So you agree with that? Yes. But that contradicts your previous evidence that he was. I have always st stated that he was holding a knife. 
I agree with you, have said that. He also stated that at the same time, he was going through the first aid kit with both hands, whilst also holding the knife with both hands. It doesn't state that he was going, going through the first aid kit with both hands. I'll move on. You say that at this stage, he was 10 metres away from you, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Oh, you state in your evidence, you've given this evidence to Chief, that at this stage, he was 10 metres away from you, correct? Yes. And you believe this is a junkie looking for drugs? I assumed. Yes. And as a reflex, you fired the gun once in this general direction, correct? Yes. And the bullet hit him, correct? I think the bullet hit him. And you believe the bullet hit him because the intruder fell to the ground and did it, correct? Yes. yes. He was 10 metres away, correct? Yes. Have you used a gun before? No. So someone was 10 metres away. You presumably aimed the gun at them in their general direction, he said. You've never used a gun, but you managed to keep them, correct? Thank you, Your Honour. There are a series of statements put to a witness there. I just ask for them to be put one at a time. Yeah. Yes. I can agree with them. You said that as a reflex you fired the gun, correct? Yes. A reflex would imply it was deliberate to fire the gun towards him, or fire the bullet to him. Yes. Yet you managed to hit him, correct? Yes. You managed to you hit him from 10 metres away, correct? Yes. Despite never firing a gun before? Yes. Despite having no previous experience with this gun? Yes. And you were 10 metres away? I put to you that this wasn't a reflex. Shoot him. Objection, Your Honour. I, I didn't catch what you put. I put to you that it wasn't a reflex. Shoot him with the intruder. What's your objection? I think it's a very broad statement to be put to my witness. I'd ask for a, a positive statement to be put. Well, it's, 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 it's a proposition which you can either answer or not. And, uh, you know, what weight is put on it is a matter for the jury. Yes, you can allow that question. Yes, Your Honour. I'll restate it. I put to you that it was not a reflex, you shooting this uh, intruder. It, is, it was a reflex because I was so startled by the situation. I put to you that it was a reflex. It wasn't a reflex. I put to you that you carefully aimed the gun at the deceased. I fired the gun once in his general direction. So yes, wrong question. <coughs> Can you restate the question, please? I put to you that you carefully aimed the gun at the deceased. No. I put to you that you must have carefully aimed the gun at the deceased because you hit him from 10 metres away. Perhaps it was just chance that I hit him. Yes or no? Can you restate the question? I'll move on. Your attention was then drawn to another intruder, correct? Yes. And he put his hands up and yelled, shoot. Yes. And you screamed at him, get out of my house or I'll shoot you as well, correct? Yes. But you didn't give him a chance to get out of your house, did you? No. I put to you that you knew this intruder. And you knew it at the time? No, I didn't know it at the time. I just said I put to you that you knew this intruder and you said yes. Oh, the police, I was informed um, after the incident that they were my neighbours. But at the time, because they were wearing valid flowers, I couldn't identify them, so I didn't know who they were. By that point, you knew the gun worked, correct? Yes. And all of a sudden, 
The third intruder stood up, correct? Yes. He produced what you thought was a handgun, correct? Yes. It was green, wasn't it? It was dark, <coughs> it was what colour was. How can you know it was a handgun? Well, he was pointing it at me, so I would assume it was a handgun. We now know that handgun of a water pistol was 10 centimetres long, like from size. You stated it was dark. I put to you that you did see the water pistol. So you put in the pistol <coughs> that she saw a water pistol? I put to you that you saw a water pistol. She saw that she knows a water pistol from a pistol. I'll, I'll, I'll put a few pictures if that's okay. I put to you that it wasn't dark. I'm sorry, I couldn't catch what you said. I put to you that it wasn't that dark in the house. It was. I went downstairs and I couldn't see the, you know, if I thought it was a water pistol because it was green, you know, I said I could produce a handgun. So it's just a yes or no. I put to you it wasn't dark. You're talking about the... The light in the house. The light in the house. Yeah. I don't recall. You don't recall the light in the house?
you don't like John Doe, do you? to you that you knew it was John Doe in your house on that day? I didn't know it was John Doe. Later I was told by police that the intruders were him and his, some of his other friends. I put to you that you deliberately shot his brothers because you don't like John Doe. The first intruder you saw, you've stated he carried a large knife in his hands, yes? Yes. I put to you that he wasn't holding a large knife. He was holding a knife. I put to you. Correct me, correct me, if you would, I thought he gave evidence that he was holding a large knife, or was holding a knife. Uh, no, that the, the deceased is holding the knife. I'm sorry? The deceased is holding a knife. But I thought the witness, John Doe, uh, said that his brother was holding a knife. I don't believe he said that. I think he said he saw him hold a banana and he saw him go through a, um, like a medical first aid kit. And he said it's possible. The transcript will show whether I'm right or not. Uh, uh, you, you're confident that you've got it right. right. I put you he wasn't holding a knife. So yes or no, I put to you he was not holding a knife. He was. I put to you that he was holding a banana. I saw a knife. I put to you that he was holding a banana. No. I put to you that you saw a banana. No, I did see a I put to you that the lighting in this house would have confirmed it was a banana. I stated that he, I saw a knife. I didn't see a banana. You also mistakenly told the court that you saw four intruders, correct? Yes. And you also told the court that you believed you heard a female in your house when you know that it's not true, correct? Yes. Thank you, Your Honour. Yes, thank you. And now I move to the closing addresses. Is this under to five? Okay. Uh, start with the prosecution. I'm not afraid. I'm looking at you. Sorry, there's a break before you go into the address. That's fine. Uh, we'll take a three minute break. You're welcome to leave the courtroom if you wish. But we'll start in three minutes' time. We will play some of the other stuff here.
You've already have heard this trial the Defence Council have conceded. The accused did shoot and kill both the deceased. What is central to this case is the accused's perceptions of the events and how it unfolded. Particularly whether she believed self-defence was necessary throughout the burglary and whether her response was proportionate to the scenario again as it unfolded. Clearly, the accused's recollections of the events are central to this case. Now, unfortunately, as is often the case, this trial has evolved very much around what he said and what she said. It is in dispute whether all doe boys or men were wearing balaclavas when they entered the house, and whether James Doe was holding a knife, or in fact a banana. It's also in contention what the second deceased, Mr. Jared Doe was holding. Prosecution Smith was holding a water gun. Prosecution Smith was very clear he was holding a water gun, not a real gun. Now, Prosecution Smith, the accused, was fully aware that all three men in the house with her neighbours. She recognised them from living next door to them. Their faces were not concealed. Prosecution submits she had the intention to kill all three men, perhaps partly because she disliked, at the very least, one of the assailants, Mr John Doe. Prosecution respectfully submits that the accused versions of the events are not reliable. On the one hand, she says that the lighting in the house is so bright she can make out other carvers. She can make out knives and, and guns. On the other hand, she says it's not easy to assess whether or not the gun held by Mr. Jared Doe was in fact a water gun. She also becomes confused as to whether or not James Doe was holding a knife, if at all, at the same time as going through the first aid kit. I respectfully submit, or respectfully ask for another minute, Your Honour. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I think we'll confine it to the, the agreed rules. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honour. Yes, Mr. Prosper. Defence, Your Honour. Your it is our submission that, firstly, the three primary elements of murder have not been met. Now, as the prosecution has outlined, we can see on those first three elements. It is our submission that the element of intention is the downfall of the prosecution's case. Now, they have outlined a few areas in which Ms. Bloggs' evidence is hazy, and she herself admitted that there are details she does not remember because the night happened so quickly. 
What the prosecution failed to then connect was how this proves an intention to kill or at least seriously injure two boys. It was suggested at one point that the motive may come from the fact that she has a social dislike of Mr. John Doe. It is a wild inference to then draw that she would attempt to hurt him and frankly too much of a leap to suggest that for some reason she would hurt his brother. The evidence of John Doe was uh, shaky at best with regards to Miss Bloggs' uh, actions towards him. Um, he expressed a clear dislike for Miss Bloggs throughout all his evidence. He openly admitted that he wanted to see her go to jail. He couldn't remember several key details. He admitted that he had uh, uh, consumed alcohol, and I put it to him that he had consumed marijuana on the day. In summation on that first submission, we would invite the court not to find that there was any intention on the part of Ms. Bloggs. The inferences that John Doe made about her behaviour are simply unacceptable to this court. If your honours do find that murder is made out, we would invite you to find an excuse for self-defence. It is our submission that the prosecution did not successfully disprove the reasonable doubt, uh, the uh, element of self-defence. We would note that the response need only be reasonable and not proportionate. We would also note that she only needed to believe it was necessary. Now, on Ms. Blog's evidence, she clearly saw three people. This is a startling event in anyone's life at 7.30 p.m. Uh, when you have a child upstairs. By Mr. Doe's own evidence, his brother, when they were asked to leave, raised a water pistol at Ms. Blog's. There's clear grounds there to believe that harm was coming her way. There was some question about her ability to perceive both the knife and the gun. The prosecution put it to her that the lighting was bad in the downstairs area. Now, I accept that her recollection on that was hazy. However, Mr. John Doe himself uh, said in his statement that the lighting was bad. Uh, I don't think it was in contention that this all happened very quickly. It was very dark. There were three strangers in her home, and she took, regrettably, uh, action that caused her death. However, we would argue that clearly there are grounds for self-defense here, and they have not been disproven by the prosecution. Accordingly, we would ask you to request Thank you. Yes, well, thank you all. Uh, the judges will now retire to consider their verdict, as they say. Oh, we'll have some photographs first, and then we'll adjudicate. Thank <laughs> you. 